We're going over to our Boja studios where uh, Labara Marco joins us. He's the Minister of Information. Morning and thank you for joining us today. Well, ever since that meeting, yes, we also do know that uh, the international governments, international community, just uh, joining up with Nigeria on advisory basis, we understand. But ever since that meeting, has there been any concrete steps taken, talking about physically now, about Boko Haram? Well, I uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Suleiman and, and, and your team, um, for inviting me to appear before you this morning. Um, let me say clearly that what is most important at the moment is that this meeting took place. And um, because the meeting took place, it has brought international coordination and attention uh, on the fight against terror. We have said, made a point over and over again that Boko Haram is, an in, is a, a domestic terror group with an international network. It's operating the same way as we have seen the Taliban operate in, uh, in uh, Afghanistan, and as we have seen the terror groups in Pakistan, in Yemen, in, Bul uh, in Algeria, uh, currently in Egypt, in Somalia, as well as in Central Africa. So it, it's, it's an international network that we are fighting. And to succeed in fighting Boko Haram and bringing the insurgency to an end demands a lot of international cooperation. The entire Sahel region of Africa, stretching from Mali to Niger to Chad to northern Nigeria, northern Cameroon, and parts of Central Africa, is a theater of war. And these groups continue to migrate from one part of the region to another. And therefore, for Nigeria to successfully uh, combat the scourge of Boko Haram, uh, the international effort will be required. And France is very crucial uh, in this war. And we are very happy that uh, France has come fully in. Even before now, we have had a lot of cooperation from Niger, from Chad, and uh, to a certain extent from Cameroon. Uh, but that cooperation still needed to be worked on because what we require is not just understanding, but practical commitment uh, in terms of uh, forces cooperation, uh, cooperation behind, uh, between security forces, cooperation in intelligence gathering, processing, uh, and information, acting together uh, to contain the squad. And I think that this meeting in Paris has prepared a template for this cooperation, and I believe that going forward it will be much better than what used to be well, the some, case. Some of our neighboring countries, uh, you could confirm this now that you're here to us, is it that they were foot dragging about supporting our fight, especially when we had the multinational joint task force, or we didn't approach them forcefully? Take, for instance, the Cameroon end of all of this matter. Let, let me say that, uh, yes, the international, the international um, uh, f task force, which Nigeria established uh, with uh, the cooperation of Niger and Chad, did not include Cameroon. Um, that force has worked a lot in dealing with the I infiltration uh, from Niger and Chad. And the entire Lake Chad region has been under the watch of that international force. With Cameroon, the cooperation has been coming. Uh, but it has not been at the same level with Niger and Chad. But in recent times, uh, the government of Cameroon has increased that, o that cooperation. And with the meeting in Paris, uh, I believe sincerely that uh, Cameroon will join fully uh, in this fight, uh, not just from sharing information with Nigeria, but actually participating uh, in providing forces, for example, uh, connecting intelligence and dealing with some aspects of terror in their own territory. For example, if terror groups run from Nigeria to Cameroon, we expect them to be content. We don't expect them to, be, to find a haven in any of our neighboring countries and then run it to strike at Nigeria and go back. So if we cooperate on that, uh, at that level, it means that no place will be a haven you know, for terror groups within the West African sub-region. So every country should deal with the situation in its own territory. If there is a threat uh, from Nigeria against Cameroon, it's expected that Nigeria will rise and deal with that threat as is against Nigeria. So this level of cooperation is what is required to make the entire region inhospitable uh, for further growth of uh, terror groups and the attacks on inno innocent what people. What was the initial reason why the multinational joint task force did not include Cameroon because uh, I, we understand that some of these hills, for instance, Gwaza Hill, the mountain top that spill into Cameroon, and, and we also understand that when they attack, they go back to those hills, and which is towards the Cameroon. And so, what was the thought? Why didn't we include them initially? Well, you know, in, initially, initially, what happened was that um, Equus, as a region, 
uh, had uh, um, a, a, an alliance, a, a group. You know, the president, when he was chairman of ECOWAS, set up uh, an, a security uh, cooperation pact with the ECOWAS countries. And our security chiefs in ECOWAS were meeting together uh, over the last three, four years. Uh, to coordinate security in the West African subregion within the ECOWAS subregion. And Cameroon was not uh, part of ECOWAS. So initially, it went on the plank of the ECOWAS member countries. So um, now that this terror group has virtually drawn in Cameroon, you know, into the fold, uh, we are now seeing that the, that cooperation is also extending between Nigeria and Cameroon. So it was a fault that started and is now expanding according to need and the realities on the ground. It, was, it wasn't as if uh, Nigeria didn't want Cameroon to be involved, or Cameroon did not want to be involved. But you know, in every war, as you move forward, the theater changes and alliances change, and more people join or leave. So I think what is most important now is that we have the cooperation of all the countries uh, in this region, including Cameroon, uh, to deal with the current threat we all face uh, from the rise of the terror. Immediately after that meeting, there are those who thought that, okay, well, we should expect some immediate reaction, saying, seeing these multinational troops on the ground, sharing intelligence, sharing images of their hideouts, like the uh, Alagano Forest, uh, the Guazo Hills, all of those areas. When do we expect some sort of physical response after this meeting? Um, what I would say here is that um, uh, even though we are receiving a lot of help now uh, in terms of technical help, in terms of uh, advice, uh, in terms of cooperation, in sourcing intelligence, a lot of the work that we expect to be done is going to be done by the Nigerian armed forces. Um, um, we have, the, the international allies have told us they are not bringing fighting forces to Nigeria, but they are going to give us technical cooperation. Uh, at the, the, the details of that job that will be done uh, are being worked out between the armed forces of Nigeria and, and the foreign technical uh, advisors and experts that are already in uh, working with them. So as we move along, as uh, the issues and the, the, the tactics, the operations uh, become uh, known, it will be shown. Uh, so I believe the most important thing is not uh, to go out and begin to show what is happening. We want to win this war, not by advertising it on television, but being very effective in getting to targets and getting the job done. So at a, along the way, I'm sure uh, Nigerians will be shown those aspects of this cooperation and the activities of the armed forces that are required for the public to know. But a lot of the work in dealing with terror is not a matter of television. It's not, it's not, this is not a conventional war, and that has been our difficulties, even in the Federal Ministry of Information. Uh, we thought of embedding journalists uh, uh, in the, in the f fight against terror, but we have been very cautious because this war has no defined territory. The enemy is not defined. The enemy does not wear uniform. The battlefront is not, the front is not defined. And we are afraid that uh, should you just put journalists out there, they could come to harm and that will become very sensational as well. So we were trying always to see what we can do to show more of what happens in the, in the theater of, of, of the operation. But I want to assure Nigerians that um, our armed forces, contrary to many comments I've had, are well, well trained and really can do this job. They can do it alone, obviously, because in terror is not a, a, a national army, it's an international force. But that cooperation does not displace the, pri the pivotal role of the Nigerian armed forces in fighting that war. It is our war. Uh, the people that come can, will help us and certainly are helping us. We expect more of the actions from the Nigerian uh, forces. As we move now, on. This is uh, a ratio of uh, unity. Five countries, Nigeria, uh, Benin Republic, Chad, Niger, and Cameroon, uh, having this talk uh, in uh, faraway France. Are we likely to see uh, this uh, take off uh, pretty soon in the days ahead? Oh, definitely, I expect that. Uh, well, I, 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 we, um, I believe, I expect that after Paris. Um, as we move forward, we should expect more cooperation from these countries uh, in terms of, like I said, sharing information, coordinating their forces uh, in dealing with the threat of terror in the sub-region. Uh, the armed forces of each of these countries must be very active uh, in their own parts you know, of, of this war. Uh, if there is a threat from Chad, we expect a forceful response from Chad. If there is a threat from Cameroon, we expect a forceful response from Cameroon. And if there is a threat from Nigeria working against those countries, our armed forces naturally will act. So I believe this cooperation is important because as it's been 
repeatedly said even by the president and, and, and other leaders, terrorism is now an international movement. It has no boundary at all. It flows from country to country. And unfortunately, in dealing with the threat, we are still respecting boundaries. 